It is trip time, Paul. <laughs> Good morning. I, I, I have a GoPro, and I even thought about doing that, but I just never did. So, I owe you all some context. First of all, Chaz is definitely dead, and I've replaced him with Paul. Second, we're headed towards the Pocahontas region of West Virginia to do a week of rail fanning. For those of you who are unaware, a rail fan is someone who likes trains and usually takes pictures of them. It's an unusual hobby, but it's taken me to some really cool places, including a ditch on the side of US-23. Fortunately, that would not be happening this trip. With a new driver and a well-maintained vehicle, I was optimistic about our chances of making it deep into the coal-filled mountains. We wouldn't be driving straight through, though. Only 300 miles into the trip, we made our first detour, Control Point Sunbeam in Jacksonville. FEC 222 was lined into Bowden Yard, and we weren't going to let a little drizzle stop us from shooting it. With the first train in the books, we jumped back on I-95 and headed for the Georgia border. Not long after, we passed Brunswick over the East River, and Paul treated me to one of his world-famous rants. Don't yell at me. No, I'm yelling at you because That's, you he, knew. He you is your knew. supplier. That is... You... You knew! You knew that I wanted Red Rock. I you, didn't know that was all of it. Oh, uh, every time we've gone to Kroger's, I say I want root beer, you guys run in there and grab it all. Oh, there's no more root beer for you. Why don't you try the Bolle root beer? You know that shit that looks like piss that's come out of a toilet? Yeah, drink that stuff. You can't have the good root beer. I can't get coal anymore because they don't stock it in the Kroger's. I gotta go to Ingalls, wherever the hell I can find one. And then I say, well, you know what? I like the root beer. I want the root beer. You guys decide, you know what? No fat fuck, you can't have any root beer. So we're gonna take as much of it as we can. I'm, I'm helping your diabetes. No, you're not helping my diabetes. I don't need you to save me from my own bad behavior. But then who's Let gonna take me to who's gonna take me to North Carolina? Oh, for crying out loud. Why don't you get Mikey to do it? Since he brought you all of the cola, since he's gonna help you out and fuck Paul, who's rode him around for years! Years and he couldn't be thick, he couldn't think enough. I'll hold back one four pack for Paul for all the stuff. That's the, like now, I said, that's now, that's Mike. Now, that's now, that's now, not me. That's right. Well, you know, if he reads this, he knows he's oh. fucked. Ooh. Ooh. You know, you're supposed to put that on a trailer. <laughs> tell you this much we're going to Ingles on this trip. We're going to we get are. some red rock cola. We are. And if you get in my way, uh, breaking your leg, I'll believe you in a shopping cart then. Yeah, my leg got broken by some fat bastard over some red rock. He th he thinks it might be profile to help this? How about a cast? <laughs> you really, you really can't do this. Yeah, yeah, I can. Too cool. Oh, oh yeah. now you can. You yeah. change your tune. I, I can now. Okay. 55 degrees, and this man is up here looking like he's bundled like an Eskimo. Oh, you have that all those layers to help you too, and I'm not talking about the clothes. Oh no, we have to use the drive through. <laughs> oh, it smells like cookout. Mm -hmm. Push the button at the bottom up there. I got big fingers. Come on. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm still amazed that they do the trade deal. Six bucks for all this. Back on the road, we made a quick stop upon entering South Carolina, then turned west onto Interstate 26. Approaching Columbia, we zeroed in on our next target, the Norfolk Southern R Line, which we'd parallel all the way into Charlotte. How you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Pretty good. We're just uh we just gossed up outside of Columbia. Do you know if there's anything coming south on the R line at the moment? No, but there, 13 R might be on the yard. It's hard to tell. All right, how long you you take think it take about hour and a half to get from Columbia up to you, or a little less? Uh, hour and a half, two hours. Okay, I'll make sure it's an hour and a half. <laughs> Aboard! <laughs> oh, Paul gets to read his train magazines. 
shotguns. Oh. Exactly an hour and a half later, we pulled into Fort Mill. Train 13R was a few minutes out, and our informant Holland was already waiting for us. Hi guys. <laughs> that would be the last train on the R line that night, so we spent the evening hanging with Holland and his family. They ordered a pizza from Toppers, a Fort Mill local favorite, and we all discussed our plan of attack for the next day. Make me say it. Say so what? You're gonna sleep all day? Oh god, no, no. Yes, I know. Good morning. After what you just said, mm -mm. <laughs> no see. We're not gonna drag them into this. So we're on day two now. Just uh, checked out of our hotel in Charlotte. We're gonna head into downtown. Paul's gonna get his Amtrak fix. And I'm going to hope and pray for some stack trains. 265. No rail fan trip is without blunders, and this was no exception. The area around Charlotte Airport is an absolute maze, and we missed 265 because of my bad navigation. But not all hope was lost. The scanner picked up another 13R copying a track authority south, and we raced back east to shoot him near Carowinds. With the first successful catch in the bag, we headed to McDonald's for some hash browns and frozen coffee. Unbeknownst to us, this part of the railroad was about to turn into an absolute mess, and we were headed to the perfect place to see all of it, Charlotte Junction. So we saw 13R last night. There's another 13R this morning that we just shot, and then there's another 13R, or M3R, the extra symbol, behind us in Charlotte right now. The reason for this is the 13R comes out of Enola, Pennsylvania, and a couple days ago, Pennsylvania got hit with a really, really bad snowstorm, so now all these trains that couldn't get out are extremely backed up, and now they're just starting to clear up the backlog. <laughs> and then came another issue. 12R was coming up from the south, and this other 13R had to wait for him. To add insult to injury, he couldn't hold the main because intermodal train 211 was coming in hot behind him. So, the dispatcher threw 13R into the rarely used advance track, line 211 past him, and then brought 12R north. Let's watch it play out. Charlotte Junction was busy, but it lacked Amtrak, which was on Paul's must-have list. So once the parade subsided, we ventured through downtown to the station, where we showed up just too late for the first northbound of the day. Eh, no matter. There would be more later, and another southbound intermodal was just around the corner. I went up on the Link Station overpass, and by the time I realized the shot wouldn't work, it was too late. After that, a gap in the action gave us enough time to get some culvers and make it up to the curve at Back Creek Church. With three southbounds lined up, we parked our butts on the sunny side of the tracks and waited for the second parade of the day.
on that note, it's time to end this episode and tell our friend Holland goodbye. Seriously, man, I can't thank you or your family enough for your hospitality and for showing us around the city. Next episode, we'll venture into southern Virginia along the Winston-Salem district and chase trains around Roanoke. Until then, take it easy, blaze your own trail.